everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls. It's our weekly angelic message for the week beginning April 1st, 2024. I'm getting this up late. I do apologize. <laughs> How's Mercury Retrograde going for you? Good? Okay. Electronics going haywire. People being moody or intense or something like that. You're being forgetful. Yup. I feel you. Right now, I'm in Ohio, and we're supposed to be getting these terrible storms through here. And I'm looking at the radar, and it looked like this horrendous storm was coming right over my town. It went right over, and I didn't even hear a rumble of thunder. So I don't even think it rained. So if you are a weather person and you know what the heck that's all about, I'd love to know. All right. So for this week, we're going to be covering the energies leading up to the eclipse on April 8th. Lots of changes, lots of things falling away. This is not going to be bad for everybody. You know, I know a lot of people are interpreting it as such, but it's going to be bad if you do, well, I guess if you do bad things, but also if you're resistant to change, if you absolutely refuse to see things outside of the box, if you're not willing to try new things, and yeah, this is going to be a little bit tough for you. But I do... I feel like, we, not literally take bets, but I would bet that power's going to go out, internet's going to go out. We'll see. All right, let me get the cards here for us. All right. A little bit of a tough energy here. So, let me put them in order for us, for our reading here. So, we have 47 Sacred Pool. This is what starts off the energy of this week. Now, remember, this isn't like day by day by day. This is telling a story. This is building up the story. Here's the basis of the story. They're saying that this is what is happening beneath the surface. So the best way to get through this week is to remain calm okay, and tuned in, plugged in. If something or someone is taking your energy, plug back into the divine energy, allow that to come on through. Mark my words, they're going to stand back, okay? They're not going to mess with you anymore. But this is also about figuring out what is truly important, okay? So if you are somebody who you're judging your life and even dragging yourself down because you think, well, I don't have, I don't know, like a fancy job or I didn't get that promotion or if you're single, you know, there's all these things that really, it's just like this mind numbing brainwashing, I guess. I guess that's part of the mind numbing. But there's this brainwashing that occurs that gets us thinking that, and I, okay, they're even saying like gets us steered away from things that could actually make us happy. Okay. Perfect example of this would be in relationships. How many people are out there trying to go for, I don't know, the conventionally pretty person or handsome person. And that's not even what's going to make you happy, right? I mean, someone else could be equally beautiful, but because they didn't dress themselves in a certain way, you may overlook it. But that's part of the conditioning. We get conditioned to go for people who look like they have money, for, for an example, or they have a lot of power or they have a name. Do you see what I'm saying? So... What Again, there's this whole thing of steering. We have been steered away from the very things that could bring us true happiness. What does that have to do with this week? There's, I'm going to show you the cards here in just a second, the rest of the cards. Um, it's a lot of stuck energy. It's a lot of standing and staring at yourself. Standing and staring at yourself. You may be exhausted. Irritability, it's going to be a thing. Wild weather, yeah. <laughs> now I'm not saying, you know, obviously an eclipse has nothing to do with the weather as we know it, or we think to know it, but, um, I, I'm talking about, it's almost like the energetic, can I call it energetic weather? I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. but I know this week I have felt, um, very out of my element and I've started a whole new project. So I'm working on that. Um, but very out of my element, but it's, it's good. It's interesting. It, you know, surrounded by really good people with this project. Um, but also exhausting. Uh, my brain is foggy this week. I feel like, 
even though I've been sleeping well, I get up in the morning and I feel like I could sleep another 10 hours. You see what I'm saying? So that spiritually speaking, obviously it's not, it doesn't speak to every level of what might be going on for you, but spiritually speaking, this is a very intense time where they're showing me it's almost like you're getting ready to go on stage. Okay. So you have to be rested up for that. You have to be recharged. Mm -hmm. You have to have a full battery for what ends up coming. Now, please understand, like this energy has been going on for a while now, and it will be going on well after this eclipse. I, there's a lot here. Can you hang with me? I know it's not like the YouTube perfect content creator thing to sit here and be silent or not be articulate, but it's freaking Mercury retrograde. <laughs> we have an eclipse coming and my brain is foggy and give me a break. Okay. <laughs> but there is this feeling here of a little bit of dread. And for some of you, it might feel like a part of you is being lost. Like a part of you is being lost. That's this rock bottom here. And 10 is an ending. So there's something that is coming to an end and you might feel like you, you ever get into that space where it's just like so many things are going off and happening to you and you just can't, it doesn't seem like you can get your footing. It doesn't seem like you can get going in the right direction. Where is this? Sacred pool. Remember, this is what's going on beneath the surface. This is what's happening on the surface. So all is not lost. So it's prepping you to strip something away. For example, if you thought you weren't capable of doing X, Y, and Z, well, you might find yourself in a situation this week that makes you do that. Why did I just think of this? I have a silly example, riding the bus, <laughs> okay? Now, I originally came from a small town. We don't have buses, right? And then when I moved to bigger cities, for whatever reason, I was always intimidated by taking the bus. And I think this stems from, I went to undergrad at Ohio State, and they had a bus system. And I remember the first time I got on a bus, the driver, like I didn't, you know, it wasn't me. They were being nasty to my friend that was with me. Um, but she had done the card wrong or something. And he just like screamed at her. And I was just like, see, I don't know, public transit, maybe not for me. I just, it already seems like there's some weirdos on the bus. <laughs> like that would cut the driver. What? Like, I don't know about this, right? So that kind of intimidated me. And I remember in New York, uh, I lived out in Queens and in order for me to get to the subway, the proper subway that I needed, I had to walk about 15 minutes or I could take the bus. It was winter out, icy. It was going to take me a half hour to walk on that ice. So I tried to get on the bus and I remember I did it and I was so, it's so simple. I know a lot of you are going to be laughing, but it was, <laughs> it was a huge accomplishment for me that I got on that bus. I'm telling you, it's going to be the little things in this as well, but that's just an example. You know, that feeling when, whether it's big or small, that feeling of I did it, it's no longer intimidating to me. I always say, if it intimidates you, jump in and learn it because then you're not going to be intimidated anymore. Okay. So that's, I think a lot of what's going on this week. You're in that sort of rough period where you're still uncomfortable with something, um, or an idea about yourself. Some of you are actually going to go, oh, okay. Sorry, I just bumped into something that made a weird noise. Things are freaking out, okay? <laughs> anyway, this rock bottom for some of you might be like, I'm, I'm getting the example of, oh, we've been trying to have a baby. It's never going to happen. I've been searching for a job. It's never going to happen. Love, so on and so forth. Or I've been trying to get my health in order and I never seem to really get it right. You know, it, it's coming from that sense. But then we have the mountain here. And that number six on there talks about material manifestations. Boy, if this isn't telling you to be strong, I don't know what, <laughs> what it's telling you. Stand strong. It's like you have to be very, very grounded as you heal because a lot of things come up in that process. But grounded also in the way of like transmuting the energy. So if you've ever heard someone say, Get outside, breathe the fresh air, um, put your feet in the grass, you know, that sort of thing. There's an actual transaction that's happening 
with the frequencies. We say frequencies of the earth and people roll their eyes like, I'm like, like what, <laughs> what does that even mean? But there is actually a real thing that is going on there. There's an energy exchange happening, right? So when we talk about the mountain, it's that same kind of concept where it's just take a moment, stand strong. When you start feeling yourself getting lost in the stress, the pressure, um, the self-doubt, right? All of these things. Just know this is all happening because as I always say, you're in your comeback story, you know, and it's the hero's journey, right? Do you think the hero is down and out and then all of a sudden he comes back to life? He's a perennial, right? So, <laughs> so whatever. Then we have 11. This is what we're talking about here. Balancing act. So this could be, you know, some things are falling away. You're having to contend with these emotions, but you're really, you're trying to stay strong through all of it. And it's a big question mark, right? Everything is a big question mark, especially leading up to this eclipse. Now, I'll talk more in next week's video. I will attempt to get that filmed a little bit sooner. That way you can have it. Um, should you be prepared? Yeah. Again, let's all just see. Is the power going to come out? Is it the rapture? Listen, hey, yo. I... I could do with a little rapture, okay? I, I'm like, I'm really tired. My back hurts. My head hurts. <laughs> like, I'm just kidding. But I do think that there are going to be a lot of things shifting and changing. And please remember, especially with things like eclipses, you know, that 2012, what, what was the date back in 2012 where everyone thought that we were just going to poof right out of our bodies and then it didn't happen and everybody kind of threw a fit, right? And they're like, aha, this didn't happen the way we thought it would. And see, it was all a lie. Well, it wasn't exactly a lie. It just didn't happen the way we thought it would. There was something very deep in inside, like an internal thing that snapped. It's where a lot of people had their ego deaths. Let's add that into the mix for this week. This could very much be an ego death, which we're going to see here in the next card. But 11, a lot of you, if you see 1111, please be careful with the repeating numbers now. And it's kind of sad because Yes, that is how angels will try to get someone's attention. But dark entities have now taken hold of this and they're manipulating that energy as well. And, you know, a very surface level example of that would be marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, putting 1111 in their ad so it draws your attention. You think it's special. So you think that's <coughs> that's the way you need to go. That sort of thing. All right, so then we have the number five, goblins. Remember what I said? Like, you know, this is a time of change. Things are kind of flipping around. And it might feel like um, like you're not going to be able to balance. You're not going to be able to keep things together, holding it down, you know, all those kinds of things. Because something is, I just heard something is fighting back. Something, and my ears keep doing their thing. Um, listen. Listen. The, the time around the eclipse, energetic things happening, absolutely, okay? More problems with opportunists, that's, that's the thing. That's what's going to happen. Uh, people knowing it's just like darkness using the repeating numbers now to trick people. And you'll know, you, you tune in to see about that. And if you want to know how to do that, or if you want an eclipse reading or any kind of angelic reading, I am still doing them. Uh, the wait time kind of fluctuates a little bit. I try to get the standard readings to you as quickly as possible. Normally I have a 25 day wait time, but I got caught up on them. Oh yes, I did. Oh yes, I did. Thank you. Thank you. I did. Yeah, I did that. I'm so proud of myself. But yeah, so if you want to get in now, sometimes I can get them to you the very next day. But if like a lot of people come in or like I've been experiencing some, uh, glitchy little things it might extend it just a little bit but you're not going to be waiting longer than even a week for them okay but remember that's like if we don't have internet in a week <coughs> then I can't get it to you you feel me okay but anyway angelsouls444.com if you see this video right as it gets up and you get in for your reading you'll probably get it very quickly okay so just keep that in mind I can take live readings here and there Email me at angelsouls444 at gmail.com. Um, let me think about tomorrow night. I might be able to even get you in by tomorrow evening. So that would be Wednesday evening. So I think. But again, 
let me know. All right. So if you want to see how this is going to be affecting you, but the goblins card, um, for some of you, I think this is like a dark energy coming out of you. Maybe waking up and realizing how sort of under the influence of or under the spell of something you have been. And again, I feel like it's largely having to do with what, what we've been told is supposed to define us. And you see it crashing down. I mean, people, I've used this example before, but people are not so interested anymore in celebrity culture. That is tanking big time. And it's almost... Um, and I'm not saying this is like an intellectual judgment. I'm saying like, I don't know, it's like a, like a physical, no, not physical, emotional response when someone is still very much into celebrity culture. It's almost like they missed the memo or something like, or you know what I mean? Like they're still thinking that, you know, some singer, actor, whatever is the greatest thing that was ever delivered to this planet. And the rest of us are kind of going, are you sure? <laughs> really? Because we don't need to put people on a pedestal like that. Or people, here's a big one. Here's a really huge problem in this world. We get taught that being kind or even soft or um, sensitive, understanding, that that makes you weak. And therefore, somehow it would be fun to beat up on those people to make those who are short-circuiting feel stronger, right? There, there's a thing here where people kind of choose to be in the short-circuited energy because it, it's how they interpret um, being alive. So when things are flowing smoothly, when everything's just kind of humming along just peacefully and beautifully... It's not enough for whatever reason. If you think of a wire, I always say the live wire example. Um, some people are choosing that because they like the spark. And there's another bit of our conditioning. The spark, the spark in love, the spark of cre creativity, you know, whatever. If you even have done a creative project because there has been a creative spark, um, how, how often do you finish those projects? Right. What do you do once that spark of an idea is done? Do you do you see it all the way through or do you lose your motivation? Right. So those are the kinds of things that could be coming up this week. And the goblins, I think that's worldwide stuff, too. I think that's a lot of. Um, you know what it is. You know what it is. I don't know if I need to name it. It's just any kind of expression of we'll just call it darkness, I suppose. Uh, that D word, that <laughs> angels, and we don't want to say that too much. Um, that's very real. That's very real. You see it. You People who are sensitive to this stuff hold this. But then there are people who they don't perceive it. And so they either want to say it doesn't exist and you're crazy for thinking that it exists. Or they pretend like they are sensitive as well. Right? Got a lot of those out there. And unfortunately, they can suck the air out of a room. But what am I talking about here? I, I think we're talking about a lot of uncomfortable moments this week and really having to challenge your thinking. I just felt like we should get one more. So 42 wide open. Keep your heart open, but to a safe place, right? So you don't want to like open your heart to everybody. If you are one of those kind, sensitive, loving people and someone's coming at you with jealousy any kind of narcissistic behavior or just thinking negative energy, just shut it down. Say, okay, and, and keep it moving because you don't have the energy to expend on people like that. It's not that they are worthless. It is whatever energy got into them that is really affecting them. So everything's okay-ish. Um... I don't know. I'll, I'll, listen, I'll give it to you straight. This is exactly what's going on. And this is why I keep hesitating. Because when I tune in, I just see, I don't even know how many people this is supposed to be. A million people. And the, like these, there's just all these little lights going off, on and off, in all of these people. And I just suddenly feel um, a lot of stories coming out all at once everyone's story is kind of jumbling around one another there might be a little bit of competition um 
it's real the this this light and dark war is very very real and this is going to intensify things when there's an intensification especially with a cluster of people who have that similar kind of energy it compounds and then as we say it goes out into the universe and then what happens there it intensifies the fight for good or for bad right take care of yourselves remember when things start getting rough this week be centered be centered you're in the middle of a I said it a million times. I'm going to say it a million one times. Think about this. A retrograde, an eclipse. I don't know. I feel like there's other stuff going on. It's a, it's a bit, but it's not anything that you can't handle. Okay? So just <laughs> step by step, moment by moment, and as much as you can, as much as you can, when you come across people, Oh gosh, how do I say this? Because I don't want to make it sound like I'm making excuses for bad behavior or for if someone is purely evil, I'm not making excuses for that. But there is such a thing as a good human who's just got some bad energy working through them, okay? Love the person as much as you can without, you know, kind of giving in and enabling them. But, you know, send, send a little bit of good energy their way without depleting yourself if you can and that comes through forgiveness. I know a lot of people don't like that. You do you, but case by case, okay? We can't put like this blanket, you know, solution over everything, okay? Angelsouls444.com if you want a reading. So get on over there and check it out. I'm sending you all so much love and take care. 